Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It's Counterpoint, a musician's tale. We're on Armstrong, and we are all over the planet with this show. My name is Cornell Bogdan. Welcome. We have a gentleman here tonight that is my special guest. He's got a top 20 blues album. He's 18 years old, and he is going to play for you. Ladies and gentlemen, Pierce Dipner. First question I have for you is how does an 18 year old white boy get the blues? Uh, honestly, kind of by accident. Yeah. Uh, where I always kind of placed it is where I started playing blues was um, it's like 11 or so years old. I was already playing guitar like in some you know really young kids like rock band stuff that oh. I was doing uh, stuff through local music stores doing like School of Rock if you know what that is. It's like, oh uh, yeah yeah yeah. Just put bands together, kids put a show on for them every couple months. But uh, I was looking at places to play you know, outside of that with professional musicians or just kind of branching out and playing with as many new people as I could. And I saw an ad for like a youth blues jam hosted by the Blues Society of Western Pennsylvania. Oh, very cool. And uh, I'd never played blues before this. So I kind of like had a week to listen to as much blues as I could and try and, you know, put something together for a jam, which, you know, as all jams go, I was not only just playing the one or two songs that I came up with, but I was also, uh, you know, sitting in with songs I'd never heard before and it kind of showed me the way that uh, blues is so well uh, well suited for improvisation kind of a lot of emotion inflection feeling stuff like that and the way that you know one person can do a, the exact same song a blues standard so much different than you know any other person that's kind of why I fell in love with the genre and how it all started out well let's talk about the album yeah going back mm -hmm. and it came out 
in 2022. Mm -hmm. And it's doing really well, man. Congratulations, yeah, thank seriously. You. Thank you. And uh, it's a self-release. It's uh, something that you know is on your own kind of label. You know, you're you're putting it out by yourself, and it seems like people are really loving it. Like I said, it's uh, top 20 on uh, Roots Blues magazine, uh, their report, and uh, I know a lot of stations are playing it. I. I came across an email, I don't know how many months ago, and a guy sends it to me, and his name is Pierce Dipner from Pittsburgh, and he says, you know, at the time, I think you were 17, and uh, I'm a blues guy, can I send you some music? And I gotta admit, I everything I get, I listen to, everything. And I'm so happy that I listen to your stuff. Yeah. Did you have any idea that it was gonna take off the way it did? Um, not really, it was kind of just like a project put together over, like. Uh, the first, well, it was coming out of like the first uh, wave of quarantine is when uh, we kind of got picking up, but pretty much just over the course of like a year we were working on it in the studio. Uh, as just the way it started was um, Dana Canone, who runs Church Recording Studio in Pittsburgh, let yes. me know that some of the guys from the band Ghost Hounds, uh, who he had a part in, and you know, he knew those guys, and they would sit in on some of his recordings. Uh, they enjoyed my EP that I put out in like 2018. And they, um, they reached out to him and said we'd, we'd be interested in doing something with this kid. So he kind of just put together a couple sessions. We started playing with each other and turned into a full length album from there. Over the course of like a year, coming in with new songs whenever we got a chance, or you know, sometimes writing songs right there while he was working on something in the room and I'd come up with something. So had a lot of time to kind of put it together. But I didn't really have any idea how well it would do or if it would be received well because, like you said, it's a self release. It wasn't something that. I was getting a whole lot of people asking for it. Was just right. taking advantage of a good situation to to make it, and then you know putting it out there and seeing if seeing if people enjoyed it. And it seems like it's getting received pretty well. So now, how many originals on the album? Uh, seven. Seven and total songs is ten. Ten. Yeah. Um, let's talk about Empty Bed Blues. Can you play that next? Yeah, I kind of yeah. have to switch over to this uh, cigar okay, box guitar. Okay, yeah, let's quick. do that while we're talking about the song. Yeah. This is the one that really did it for me. Um, and I think the main reason is just the slide guitar yeah. and knowing that you have a cigar box guitar, man. Um, this was made for you by who? Uh, Matt Isbell from Ghost Town Blues Band in Memphis. Okay. And did you always want one of these style guitars? Um, once again, like a lot of things are with, with how uh, music has been for me, it kind of became like an accidental thing that I <laughs> fell into. Um, this blues uh, fiddle player from Boston named Alana Katz Katz. Okay. Uh, she won a uh, like a cigar box guitar made by Matt Isbell in a raffle for okay. Generation Blues. Uh, it was just like a three string. I still, you know, I played that a lot. That was also on uh, some recordings I've done. But uh, with that guitar, she won it, gave it to my Blues Society's president saying, we know you do a lot for kids. Give this to a young musician you know. And it, over the course of time, made its way to me. And through that, I got to meet Alana. I got to meet Matt when I went back to Memphis for the IBC again and talked to him. Uh, saw him playing one pretty similar to this and said, you know, can I get one of those? We went through the whole process, put it together, and, you know, well, it's been one of my we, favorite things. Yeah. Before we play the song here, I got a name drop. Samantha Fish, who has been on this show, said to me, did you hear the guy from Pittsburgh? And I've said, you're talking about Pierce, aren't you? Because you were one of the top 10 in her, yeah, well, I was. I, I think how, how did that all work with her cigar box? She's looking for cigar box guitarists. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was um, the like New Orleans cigar box guitar video playoffs that they do each year. Uh, the first year I did it, it was the Samantha Fish cigar box guitar video playoffs. Like her name was attached to it. I got um, top ten that year, and um, I believe that that one was done with the the three string that Matt made me. But um, might have been with this one, but it's kind of. Well, let's let's crank this thing, man. Took it back this year and got a uh, third place in it. So <laughs> nice, it pretty nice. Plain. Yeah. So uh, what you're basically saying is there are two other people that are better than you. I want to know who they are. But right now, you're my number one, man. Play that thing. Definitely. This is called Empty Bed Blues, right? Yes. All right. This morning 
yeah, yeah. had them at the Bear Blues. Well, I woke up this morning, had them at the Bear Blues. Saw Dan in my mattress, where I used to see you. Took out your clothes, took my brand new car. Well, you took out your clothes, wrecked my brand new car. I'd ask myself, baby, why you are the way you are. by Pierce Dipner. It's on his album, Going Back. If you need more details, go to his website, which is piercedipner.com, and you will find all kinds of cool stuff over there. But Pierce, let's continue. You just graduated from high school. Congratulations, man. You made it. You made it. And and I, I want to thank your, your dad, who is off camera here because he's kind of shy. But what a great dude. And, and your mom and dad have been very influential in your career. I'm sure they supported you an awful lot, especially when you were younger, driving you from here and there. Uh, tell me about the parental influence on you and, and getting you through high school and the future. Yeah, I mean, I'm very lucky that, you know, being a musician, especially a young musician, also in a uh, genre that isn't as populated with young musicians, that the whole time I've been trying to, you know, uh, make it out there and do as much as I could. My parents were always behind me. Uh, started out with just before I was even playing out professionally, you know, always telling me, you know, you should try and do this, you should look into this, look into that. They were the ones who told me about the uh, Blues Jam because my mom saw it on Facebook. But, um, okay. you know, and since then, always, uh, you know, they've been helping me with pretty much everything I do. My mom helps me a lot with, uh, she'll like just text me names of venues, tell me reach out here, they might like you here. Uh, remind me to, you know, check my emails every so often when I'm, you know, thinking about other stuff. Uh, Especially my dad, he's been really helpful, always, you know, asking me, you know, what gear do you need? What do you need here and there? And now it's coming to the point where it's more, you know, I'm trying to, well, not trying to, but it's coming to the point where I can do more uh, music stuff on my own, you know, take myself to gigs. And, uh, I mean, they still come to a bunch of my gigs. I enjoy having them there. And Well, I noticed today support. he's like your chauffeur. Yeah, he, that's, uh, that's, he, a, that's a pretty, probably, <laughs> that's pretty he's, nice, man. He's, up until, honestly, even though I got my license at 16, I didn't take myself to a gig solo until I was like 18. Okay. And up until then, there's probably been a couple hundred gigs that he's driven me to, and he still takes me to a lot of them today. Well, I'll tell you what, I was on your website, and you want to talk about a guy that's busy. 
you don't have many days off during the week, man. No, not too much. Especially uh, excited this summer to be able to get out and play a whole lot more. It's kind of tough to play as much as I want to during a school year, but yeah. you know now I'm like wide open playing weekdays and everything. It's gonna be fun. Yeah. What I really love about people your age is I've noticed that if you put on your favorite pop radio station, whatever it is, you can listen for hours on end and never hear a guitar. Never hear a guitar. And it seems like the really young, hotshot guitar players, male and female, white and black, are coming either through the blues ranks or country ranks. And it seems like those audiences gravitate towards guitar players. There's a there's a lot of folks out there that are doing it. Uh, what, what do you think the reason is for that? I mean, I think probably with two reasons, uh, blues and country are definitely like just guitar oriented genres. They're, they're you know, the fun sort of bar type of uh, genres. You know, people want to go out and with country, they want to go out and dance with blues. I mean, some people go out and dance too, but it's music that you want to go out and enjoy your night to. It's like, I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan of jazz and, and I mean, even classical. I mean, I played, I've played cello since I was eight. I've done European tours with orchestras and stuff, but um, there's something about blues, especially to a lot of the listeners where they just want to hear, you know, seriously good musicians playing some strong guitar and it doesn't always have to be, you know, uh, for example, heavy metal or any other kind of stuff right, like that where right. it's a lot of really technical stuff. You can look at some of the greatest guitar players and what they can do with two notes, yeah. uh, you know, says a whole lot. It's, it's, it's very so it's, well put. Their genre is kind of steeped in the instrument, the uh, the instrumental values of guitar. I mean, they're, that sort of inflection, that sort of personal touch they can add, and especially with the younger musicians, why I think that they gravitate towards that is it's a genre that is not as popular today uh, with you know, younger generations and there's also just something about younger musicians that people like to see someone coming up and taking the spot True. and someone that they can Carry trust in the it torch, with. Yeah. Man. So I mean, I've seen a lot of young guitar players play blues venues and not get a great response, but when, when you get a great response, it's a really good feeling because you know that that's them entrusting you with the, with the genre and carrying it on. So. Um, one thing I really, really love about your, your playing is, is your singing. You know, it seems like the two go hand in hand, and I know for a fact you could be the first person we've had on this show, Greg, that has also plays cello. And did you learn singing via the cello, or how, where did, how did the singing come in? Because you could tell you were a great musician, great instrumentalist. How did the singing come in? Especially playing cello since you were eight. I'm sure you don't do too many sing-alongs with that, do you? No, no. I, I should have made you bring a cello. <laughs> yeah. In kind of the order, it was guitar, and then like immediately after I started guitar, I started playing cello just through school. Oh, okay. When you got to third grade, they let you pick an orchestra instrument, and then they'll uh, you can do band later on. But I just stuck with cello, and then vocals, and I started playing drums and bass, and just tried to branch out from this. Oh, so you play you play it all? I mean, with bass, I'm not you know the best. I take a lot of stuff from guitar and just put it on there. So I wouldn't say I'm the craziest, but I've I've played drums uh, since I was nine, and. Um, with singing, it was also, once again, just kind of like an accidental thing. I was playing guitar in a, one of those, like, it's called Rock U at my local uh, music music uh, store. Okay. They'd put together all the kids taking lessons into bands. Okay. And there was a band without a singer that I was put into. Te they texted everyone's parents, like, does one of your kids want to sing? And I said, I'll give it a try. I just kind of went from there. I, I took a little bit of singing lessons here and there. I've taken some one-off lessons with vocalists from Pittsburgh, especially um, this guy John Minor from, yes. uh, from Pittsburgh. Yes. Uh, and just kind of went from there. I think recently, at least, I've noticed that my voice has kind of come into its own a little bit more. Right. I used to really not like the way my voice sounded. I still don't like to hear myself sing, but I kind of enjoy singing a little bit more than I used to. You need to, to develop a um, scotch and cigarette problem. And if you develop that, Pierce, there's, there's my words of advice for you. You know, you'll get, but no, you're doing just fine. Don't do that, kids. Do not do that. Um, What's the future look like? Um, now that you're graduated from high school, you're probably taking, I think you told me um, off camera that you're taking some college courses just to keep your you know, feet in there. But you know, your music career is kind of 
kind of like important right now. Yeah, I'm like I feel like with music, I'm right at that point where I have to make the decision. You know, am I gonna really go into this or you know not? So I'm taking this summer as far as I can. I'm I'm playing out a bunch. I'm still gonna try to book some more stuff towards the end of the summer. Just fill up as many days as I can. Um, do with that as much as I can and see what contacts I can make. What um. You know, to see where that takes me, and then in the fall I'll be starting like some classes at community college just to have, okay, you know, a continuation of education in case I decide to go further with it. But I'm not at the point where I'm ready to make a monetary and I guess um, time commitment to a four-year university because one way I'll be. And I bet you your know, parents appreciate that. Yeah, they, yeah. they definitely appreciate <laughs> not having to spend as much on college, and uh, so it's like you know, if I do decide to go full on with music, I'm I'm dropping out of something that's couple thousand dollars a year instead of tens of thousands of dollars. I got to say to dad, I have a I have a daughter who has a master's degree from Carnegie Mellon. Okay, wait till you see that invoice. You know, wait till you see that invoice. So good for you, man. And um, uh, are you working on a new record? Uh, I'm working on writing some new songs. This okay. one, I think I'm going to, if I get back in the studio anytime soon, it's definitely going to be with my, uh, my trio that I perform with. My first EP was with them and also a, uh, a, a uh, piano player and who also played saxophone on it, but it was those... My drummer and bass player were on it. With the with the new one, my my drummer was not on the record. Okay. And that wasn't because you know I picked someone over, and it was just the the guys from the ghost towns volunteered to do this with me. So I took that opportunity. But I definitely want to put out something with my trio that I'm performing with. And we won our local um, blues challenge to go to Memphis yeah. for the IBC. So we have a uh, we have a small like gift card to a recording studio. So we might be putting out a single or couple songs, maybe an EP, depending on how much we can get out of that. So we'll see what uh, comes about with that. I, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but girlfriend? <laughs> no. No? That could be uh, where a lot of the blues influence comes from. A lot of people tell me that all the time, like, how do you sing about all this heartbreak and stuff? <laughs> empty bed empty blues. Bed blues. Yeah. That's what I'm wondering. So it's, you know? it's, it's just a teenager greatly inflating uh, his <laughs> extremely small amount of experience into what an old blues man would write about. Very, very nice. Well, Pierce, I want to ask you, before we have uh, one more uh, track off the record, what's the first song that you learned how to play? Um, if, uh, the first blues song? No, oh, no, the just the first, the first song. Um, what is the first song that you could remember that, you know, you played it on your guitar and it was like, hey, that's the way it's supposed to sound? Honestly, it's uh, probably Blitzkrieg Bop, the Ramones song. Oh, Blitz, yeah, give yeah. me a little bit of that, <laughs> if you don't mind. Uh, yeah. yeah, by the Ramones, <laughs> my God. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, one of the first my guitar teacher would teach me. Yeah, that's you know, it. Just, except back then it was sounding more like... <laughs> if you're going to learn, learn the Ramones. Good for you, man. Good for... All right, what else you got for this us? This one's called uh, Taurus Apart. Taurus Apart? Yeah. Once again, the album is going back. His name is Pierce Dipner. We're going to play right now. Thank you. 
website number one find out where he's playing number two get a hold of the cd you're gonna love it dad thanks for driving them down here greg and compadre thanks for making us look good want to thank the biker brew house here in austin town for having us ladies and gentlemen you've been watching counterpoint a musician's tale i'm cornell bogdan peace <laughs>